Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to install the 3D Fuse Direct Drive Extruder Kit for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro 3D printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to install the 3D Fused Direct Drive Extruder Kit for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro 3D printers. 3D Fused has been working on a Direct Drive Extruder Kit which mounts on their X axis rail kit for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. And Cody from 3D Fused sent me one recently and, in fact, that's it right there. Now, I do want to be clear on a few points. First, I did receive this free of charge. Second, this is designed to mount on the 3D Fused X axis rail kit and not on a stock Ender 3 X axis. It replaces the X carriage included in the 3D Fused X axis rail kit with a taller one, which has extra mounting holes for the extruder stepper motor and some holes for some zip ties. And lastly, this is not a review, this is a how to install it video. And before we get going, there are a couple of things to note. If you have a Micro Swiss all metal hot end and the stock mainboard, the one without the silent stepper motor drivers, you are likely to see surface artifacts on your prints that you didn't see before. I've run into this previously when using the all metal hot end in combination with a direct drive extruder and cheap standard stepper drivers. After the installation, I'll show you what I'm talking about and tell you how to fix it. Also, this does add a little bit of weight to the X-axis, and on my printer, it was just enough to be able to spin the Z-axis stepper motor when that motor wasn't being powered, such as at the end of a print job. So I'll talk about that and the solution after the installation as well. Now, let's go over what comes in this kit. You get a new X-carriage, a spacer for the extruder mechanism, screws to mount the extruder stepper motor, a stepper motor extension cable, a short length of PTFE tubing to connect the extruder and the hot end, and zip ties to secure the cables. And there's one little cutting jig that I designed that you'll need to print out to help you get the PTFE tube cut to the correct length. It's linked in the description and it's a quick print, probably 20 minutes tops. I recommend printing it now because it's a lot harder to print when you've got the extruder taken apart. So are you ready? All right, let's dive on in and get started. If you have filament loaded in the printer, turn the printer on, heat the nozzle, and unload the filament. Then turn the printer off and unplug it. Wait for the printer to cool to a safe temperature before proceeding. Remove the two screws securing the fan shroud to the X carriage and then set the fan shroud out of the way. Disconnect the Bowden tube from the hot end. Remove the hot end from the X carriage. Set the hot end and fan shroud out of the way. Remove the six screws securing the X carriage to the belt and to the linear rail block. Then set the X carriage aside. Unplug the cable from the extruder stepper motor. Remove the extruder and the stepper motor from the extruder bracket. Cut and remove the zip ties, which secure the Bowden tube to the mesh cable bundle. Remove the Bowden tube from the extruder. Install the new X carriage using the six screws removed from the previous carriage. Reinstall the hot end on the X carriage. For the stock hot end, loosen the coupler at the top of the hot end by one full turn. Insert the PTFE tube all the way down into the hot end until it's resting against the nozzle. Lift the retaining ring to ensure the PTFE tube is locked into place. It may be beneficial to use a collet clip to lock the retaining ring in place. Tighten the coupler on the hot end which will fully seat the PTFE tube against the nozzle.
For the Micro Swiss all metal hot end, insert the PTFE tube into the hot end. Snap on the collet clip. Then push the PTFE tube into the hot end again. It may go in about a millimeter more. Slide the PTFE tube cutting jig into place over the PTFE tube and X carriage. Using a razor blade or utility knife, cut the tube off where it protrudes from the jig, then remove the jig. While holding the spacer against the extruder, slide the extruder's coupler down onto the PTFE tube. Working from behind, insert the long screws through the X carriage, the spacer, and the extruder. While ensuring the stepper motor's connector is facing the power supply side of the printer, attach the stepper motor using these screws. The countersunk screw, which goes in one corner of the extruder assembly, will be too long, and it's not strictly needed in this installation, so we're going to skip it. Attach the filament loading lever to the extruder using the M3 by 16 socket head screw included in the kit. Reattach the fan shroud using its screws. Plug one end of the stepper motor extension cable into the extruder stepper motor. Route the cable along the same path as the existing cable bundle. Plug the other end of the extension cable into the original end of the extruder stepper motor's cable. Route the cables under the extruder stepper motor and zip tie them to the X carriage. With the X carriage all the way towards the power supply side of the printer, zip tie the cables to the original extruder bracket. Then zip tie the cables to each other so that they move as a single bundle. Now, at the start of all this, I mentioned that if you're using a Micro Swiss all-metal hot end and the stock non-silent Creality mainboard, you may see some weird surface finish on your prints. I also ran into this when I installed the Micro Swiss all-metal hot end on my direct drive monoprice printers, and the issue is this. Some stepper motor drivers can have problems getting the current levels correct for certain microstep values, so instead of the motor moving smoothly, it kind of twitches ahead a couple of steps before it really should or at least that's my understanding of it. And when that happens, it causes a little extra pulse of filament to be pushed toward the hot end. With PTFE-lined hot ends and with the full-length Bowden tube filament paths, there seems to be enough wiggle room for the filament to bend and absorb some of that pulse. But the direct drive filament path is so short and so well constrained that it seems like every little pulse of filament shows up immediately on the print, and that has an adverse effect on the surface finish. So how can you fix that? Well, by installing a TL smoother board for the extruder stepper motor. The TL smoother board goes inside the control box and it plugs in in between the printer's main board and the cable that goes to the extruder stepper motor. Now, I can't go into that installation in this video today, but if you'd like to see a video about how to do this, please let me know in the comments. A TL smoother board helps to smooth the stepper driver's output, and as a result, you don't see that weird texture effect on the surface of the print. Here's an example. Take a look at these three Calicat prints. The darker one on the left is one that I printed a while ago with the stock extruder and no TL smoother. The one in the center is one that I printed with the direct drive kit installed and again, no TL smoother board. And the one on the right is one that I printed with the direct drive kit installed and with a TL smoother board installed. The one in the center has a more or less awful surface texture, but looking at the one on the right, you can see that by installing the TL smoother, I've got the surface finish back to what it was before. So again, this is just something that I've noticed when you combine a direct drive extruder and a Micro Swiss all metal hot end, and the solution seems to be a TL smoother. So let's talk about the other issue that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This kit adds a little bit of weight to the X axis, but not much. The weight comes from the slightly larger aluminum X carriage plate. It does not come from moving the extruder stepper motor onto the X carriage because these were already part of the X axis. We repositioned them, but their weight has always been held up by the Z lead screw. On my printer, I've added enough weight to the X axis that it'll sink down to the bed when the Z axis motor is no longer powered, such as when a print finishes. So to counter that, you can use an anti-backlash nut. 
The anti-backlash nut is optional, but highly recommended with this kit. Now, Creality has their own special size for anti-backlash nuts because the stepper motor is so close to where the anti-backlash nut would be installed. I've only found one supplier on Amazon and it takes forever to get them and they're kind of pricey. But since I don't want the X gantry coming into contact with the finished print, I've installed a generic anti-backlash nut along with a printed adapter to make it fit. The generic part works in this instance because the extruder stepper motor has been moved over to the X carriage. On an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro with the Bowden style extruder, if you want an anti-backlash nut, you'll need the Creality sized one. It's designed to fit alongside the extruder stepper motor. I talked to Cody about this and he's looking into carrying the Creality size anti-backlash nuts in the future. In the meantime, I have Amazon links in the description for the Creality sized ones and the generic brass one that I'm using. And there's also a link to the Delrin ones that 3D Fused sells in case you want to throw one in the cart when you order this kit. And I've also linked to the adapter that I'm using, which I found on Thingiverse. So again, I do recommend that you install one of these if you find that the X gantry is sinking to the bed when the Z-axis motor is no longer powered. Well, congratulations, you are done with the installation of the 3D Fused Direct Drive Extruder Kit that mounts on their X-axis linear rail kit. With that done, you can now use your favorite method to level the bed or tram the bed or, as I like to say, adjust the bed to nozzle distance for an optimal first layer. And then you can print something out. So that's really all there is to the installation. In real time terms, you're probably looking at about 10 or 15 minutes worth of work. And when you're done, you've got a nice direct drive solution on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. Now, in your slicer, you'll want to experiment with your retraction length, but you can probably drop it down into the one millimeter or less range. So now, among other things, loading filament will be easier because the filament goes in right where you can see it in the front instead of having to reach around the side to get it loaded in. And you'll be able to easily print flexible materials such as TPU. Okay, well that about wraps up this installation and the episode. Now don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts down in the comments. And if you like the content that I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying and heck, even just subscribing. is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, now that I've got a direct drive extruder on my Ender 3 Pro, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>